Welcome and thank you for joining us for today's Dealer on Webinar, Secrets to Building a Strong Circle of Influence for Your Business. My name is Eliana Raggio and I'll be your moderator today. Today's webinar is being presented by Dealer on. For anyone who isn't familiar with Dealer on, we're an award-winning website development company and digital agency, best known for our amazing SEO, the absolute best customer service, and the highest converting website designs in the industry, including the brand new Chameleon Responsive Website Platform. We're so committed to lead conversion, optimization, and customer service that DealerOn is still the only company in the industry brave enough to offer a money-back lead guarantee program. Does your website company guarantee you a 50% lift in leads or your money back? Maybe you should check us out at our gorgeous brand new DealerOn website at DealerOn.com. By the way, DealerOn is going to be attending what is now known as a can't-miss industry event, Kane Automotive's 11th Annual Automotive Digital Success Workshop. It's November 10th through the 12th in Lexington, Kentucky. It's your passport to digital success where you'll build a plan that perfectly aligns with your goals and carries you into the new year. And DealerOn's own director of search and social, the amazing Greg Gifford, will keynote speaker, will keynote present. And for tickets and for more information, check out KaneAutomotive.com. We hope to see you there. And we have a great show in store for you today. We're very pleased to have the one and only David Kane as our presenter today. David Kane is president of KaneAutomotive.com, an award-winning training and consulting company that specializes in automotive internet sales, BDCs, digital marketing, and social media with a focus on improving dealership sales and profits. Notably, Kane Automotive was voted Best Internet Sales Training Company for the last six years in a row in the Dealer's Choice Awards by Auto Dealer Monthly Magazine. David Kane has over 30 years of extensive automotive retail experience, and he also co-founded FordDirect.com, a dealer factory-owned joint venture that provides the internet leads to Ford and Lincoln dealers. David is an active speaker at many industry events, including NADA conventions, state association workshops, digital dealer conferences, and manufacturer training conferences, as well as numerous 20 groups. And he can be reached at david at kaneautomotive.com. Now, during the presentation, if you have any questions, please use the question feature located on the corner of your screen to submit them. At the end of the presentation, we'll answer those questions of general interest. If we're unable to get to your question live, we're going to try to respond to you by email later today. Also, don't forget, a link to download a copy of this webinar recording will also be emailed to you later today for your reference. And please feel free to share it with your friends and colleagues. Oh, and guess what? Our good friends at Kane Automotive, ooh, they're giving away an awesome prize today on the webinar. One of you lucky webinar attendees is going to win a seat for you and a guest at Kane Automotive's 11th Annual Automotive Digital Success Workshop. Like I said before, it's November 10th through the 12th in Lexington, Kentucky. This is an amazing educational opportunity, and this prize is valued at $800. It's a tremendous prize for you and for your dealership. You have to be on the live broadcast to win it, though, so stay tuned, and you could be the one winning this awesome prize today. Also, at the conclusion of the webinar, you're going to receive a short survey, so fill it out because we're always looking for quality feedback from our audience. Today, we're going to randomly select a couple of people from all those completed surveys to also win some Google prizes. And hey, do you tweet much? We hope you do. We'd love to see what you have to say about today's presentation. Please tag us in it. You can use hashtag DealerOnWebby, at DealerOn. I'm at Eliana Raggio. You can also hit up David Kane at Kane Automotive. We look forward to seeing what you're saying. So let's get started. Let's learn the secrets to building a strong circle of influence for your business. David Kane, how are you, sir? I have to say, and I, I don't think I'm alone in saying this, one of my very favorite webinar presenters I've ever had on the show. That's why I keep inviting you back, sir. So nice to have you back here again. Well, it's great to have the opportunity to talk with you again and also to present to your fine audience. One thing that, that we've learned at Liana is the people who pay attention to the dealer on webinars as they come out are those movers and shakers in the industry, and it's a thrill to be able to get on the phone with them. I could not agree more. The names that I see come, come across my screen, I've heard of them outside of my webinars, and you are absolutely right. They are movers and shakers. And speaking of movers and shakers, for uh, us to help those movers and shakers and maybe help some people who maybe 
aren't movers and shakers just quite yet. This topic is very timely. I love it. And I don't think we've ever really done a webinar on this topic. So I'm very excited to see how we can help those people in the automotive industry get a stronger circle of influence. Where do we begin? Well, so it starts with understanding what the topic is. And when you consider the opportunity that's in front of most dealerships and, and more specifically the individuals who work in the dealerships, Ileana, is you've got these team members that come to work and we become a very reactive crew. And I remember when I first started selling cars, and I cringe when you said 30 plus years of experience when I was uh, <laughs> you cringe? A, <laughs> a pup in the business in 1982. I showed up at our family's Ford dealership, which we still operate in the Lexington, Kentucky market. And I uh, was talking to my father about the business, and he said, well, we're going to advertise, and we're going to have people who are going to call us, and they're going to show up. In 82, we didn't have the Internet, so he said, but the thing you need to do is let the grocer, the barber, your friends, and people in your circle of influence know that you sell cars, and people love to buy cars from people they like and trust, and that's the best way that you can um, build on your success. So that became the drumbeat uh, within our organization. I don't know if I've shared with you all before, but I'm one of nine children. So when, when you're at a dealership and four of your fellow salespeople have the same last name as you, <laughs> you've got to work really hard to make sure you've got your own individual circle of influence to build business back to you. So, Are you the oldest, the middle focus. child? What are you? We want to know. <laughs> I'm number six. So You're I'll number six? Oh, my brothers. goodness. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so we're going to talk about how that needs to work. So our objectives are understanding what your circle of influence is, how to grow each circle within the circle, and they'll understand that more in just a moment, what are tools and techniques they can utilize, and why your dealership needs a daily social hour. And I, I say social hour, I don't mean happy hour, but the social hour can certainly turn into a happy hour if it's done right. And then we'll get to the Q&A so that everybody can... Uh, get into any details that they want covered in, in more uh, authority there at the end. So that's where we'll go. Okay, let's get started. All right, so building a strong circle of influence really is, in my opinion, your key to success. So this is broader than just, say, Internet or BBC. This goes to the essence of the success of the dealership. So the circles within the broader circle of influence make up what it takes to be successful. And we all are going to have customers. We're going to be provided prospects. Most of us are friendly, so we have friends. We probably have some level of family, whether it's small, large, or in between. We've got people we work with. If we're in a dealership, we've got people that work in body shops and service departments and the office that, that are looking to refer friends and family to somebody. We've got neighbors, our next door neighbor, the people down the street, people who need to know that we sell cars and they, they wonder why we drive these different interesting cars and park them in our driveway. Let's make sure we, we meet them and, and greet them and let them know what we do. One of the hidden circles of influence are these online and offline community groups. And I don't mean social networks per se. I'm talking more like uh, the clubs we join and, and the people, the forums that we might engage with online. And then, of course, social networking, which we'll get into more detail as we go forward, but most of us are very familiar with the Facebook and the LinkedIn and all of the other options that are out there. And I'm not being facetious when I say the Facebook or the LinkedIn, <laughs> uh, but certainly for the fun of it, I want to make sure everybody understands that those are critical to building your circle of influence. So I love this statement by Frederick Nietzsche, and it's, it's just a paraphrase of what he said. It says, he who has a why can bear almost any how. And the reason why I bring that up, Ileana, is because a lot of us don't understand why we are doing things. And, and we really need to break it down and, and understand the gain that comes from going to this uh, effort. And, and the why for most of us gives us the energy. So whether it's losing weight or getting in better shape or uh, using Rosetta Stone to learn a new language or whatever it is, we know what our why is, then we can sit there and put the extra effort into accomplishing it. So 
so ultimately we need to decide what's your goal. So why would we want to mess with these circles of influence? We're doing okay. Business is good. We're setting a record, uh, one that we haven't seen in almost 10 years in the industry. So why do we need to mess with any of this? Well, you know, there's there's the difference, and I love this conversation I had with a young man who works at a dealership group out in Arizona. And he called me up one evening, and uh, I always take a call from a customer no matter what time of day or night it is. And he said, do you know any salespeople who sell 50 or more cars a month? And I said, uh, Trent, I, I do, and I, I know that there are some common threads to what causes them to be successful. And he goes, would you do me a favor and could you hook me up with those people so that I can have a conversation with them and learn what they do on a daily basis to be successful? So I love that and it made all the difference in the world. And it, it inspired me to do webinars like this because anytime I'm working with someone who really wants to learn, it makes me want to do better myself. So the first thing we need to do is do a review of our current state versus our plans or our future state. So you answer the questions. What is your current monthly sales average? What what are your earnings on a monthly basis, my average right now? And then project what your future should or, or would be depending on what your level of effort and your commitment is. And, and do the same thing for your earnings. So when we're able to establish the why we would want to do something, the chances of, us, of accomplishing it are much greater. So Understand what your why is, then you can build on the how and you'll sustain it as you go through it. And I always love this, this uh, philosophy that says basically a goal without a plan is just a wish. And, and I think that's really critical here because we can sit there and become dependent on our managers. And I, I go to dealerships all the time and I, I see teams sitting around and they say, you know, I ask them, what do you need from your management? And they say, well, I need more leads. I need more advertising. they got to run more ads. i got to have more opportunities. Well, that's going to happen because the dealership needs that. But what are you going to do with what you have and, and what they provide to you so that you can grow it beyond that? So we say it's really imperative that you design your plan and focus on that. So it starts with just doing a little paperwork. And uh, the nice thing it is, this, this presentation will be available for download. So whether you want to create your own um, strategies in known document type format or you want to use what we've got on the screen, you're more than welcome to start with that. But I almost say this facetiously, they should outline their current daily work plan. So uh, a lot of times when I'm talking with managers, I say, what is your required daily email count, your daily phone call count, your daily social contacts and handwritten notes and so on and so forth. And they're, they're saying, well, you know, we recommend, we recommend, we rec recommend. There's a huge gap between recommendation and required. And when, when we think about the different jobs we've had, and I've done factory work, and I remember I worked at Rand McNally one summer in between my, my senior year in high school and freshman year in college, and I didn't have the opportunity to do uh, the recommended work that they gave me. In a factory, you do the required work. When that assembly line fires up, you do it. And one of the curses, I think, in the auto industry is we've got a lot of recommending going on. Uh, and we don't have any required workloads on the sales floor in a lot of dealerships. So I always like to say to the general managers, sales managers, what do you require of your team on a daily work plan basis? And a lot of them say, well, you know, that's a good point. We need to get there. So I would encourage you not to wait for your manager, but you should, if you have zeros on your current daily work plan for required activities, move to your future daily work plan and start requiring things of yourself. Sending emails daily, number of phone calls daily, and start doing the month, or start doing the math so that you can figure out the number of required daily contacts multiply that by 24 work days, which is an average work day count for most salespeople, and then you'll come up with what you require of yourself to do on a monthly contact basis. Now, if we imagine just a bit, if you made that many contacts that you come up with in a month, how many vehicles could you sell? And what we've estimated is if you want to sell 20 units a month, 
you can do that for each 1,000 monthly contacts. And a lot of people sit here and go, God, you know, that sounds too much like work. I don't know if I even know that many people. How could I contact them? But we'll get to that, and I'll, I'll show them how to map it out, and, and we'll get into the phonics of it. The other thing we've got to do is to change our habits if we're going to succeed. There was a really wonderful book I read on the topic called The Power of Habit. And a habit is nothing more than a settled or a regular tendency or practice, especially one that is hard to give up. This can develop into a bad habit. And the truth of the matter is, in most dealerships, we've got settled or regular tendencies or practices that we do every single day. Sadly, we've created bad habits. And the tough part of it is, it takes a while to create good habits. There was a study done by a researcher at University College in London, Philippa Lally, and they said for any reasonably complex uh, habit that we're trying to build, it takes 66 times to make it a habit. Not 7, not 21, but 66 times. So we realize it is a very heavy lift to change what you're doing. And unfortunately in the car business, what we see more, more often than not is we see salespeople saying, I tried that three or four times and it didn't work, so I'm going to go back to what wasn't working before and keep doing that. We've got to break those habits by laying in new habits, and that's our best path to success. So getting on to the next steps, we've got to think in terms of what are our personal circles of influence, create our own achievable daily communication actions, and then create a plan for those communications, and then make sure that we work in harmony with our management at the dealership to ensure that we're doing things that are in concert with what the dealership wants done. So I would hope <laughs> if you're thinking optimistically, you're thinking this might actually work. On the other side of the scale, you might be saying, but I'll have to actually work. And a lot of people walked into the dealership this morning thinking, oh, this will be a good day. It's a Thursday. Business is going good at the start of the month. You know, I'll just kind of cruise through today. You know, get my commission from last month. I closed up pretty good. I'll wait till around the 5th or the 10th or the 15th to really kick it into gear. The biggest curse you can give yourself is to let a day go by without doing your daily habits and your daily routines to build your business. And thinking of your circles of influence, what I'd like to do is to encourage you to utilize the following pages and think in terms of how many people are in your personal circles of influence. So when we, when we get into the nitty gritty, the things we want to know about the customer versus just name and vehicle that they're interested in, when I look at my own personal database, I want their full name, phone number, email address, maybe a mailing address, know whether or not this is a customer that uh, I've had a relationship with in work or in, in school or in church or whatever it is so that I can build on those relationships and see what, what else I can scale to. Additionally, I'm not just looking for the basics. I want to know everything I can know about the customer, so I'll make copious notes and put this information in there, whether this is a client or whether this is a prospect. And I want to know kids' names, I want to know their likes, their dislikes, birthdays, whether they're a Cowboys fan, a, a 49ers fan, a, a Eagles fan, whatever it is, I want to know all of that so that then I can build more personalized communication as I go forward with these customers. And I just want to kind of throw this out there, and, and I want to talk about your personal database. So a lot of us don't really have a personal database. We utilize a dealership CRM tool, but we don't do a really good job of keeping up with things that we need to know about our, our own customers and our own prospects. So a personal database management tool is really, really essential. I remember Jack O'Nam was one of our salespeople at the dealership while I was growing up. When I started selling cars, Jack had binders in behind on his bookshelf, and it had every buyer's order of every customer he ever sold a vehicle to. And on the back of the buyer's order, he had all these notes that he'd written 
about their names, their kids, their you know interest, and so on and so forth, and it made it that much easier whenever he picked up the phone. He could just scan through there and call people, and he'd update phone numbers and such, and it just made it really, really simple. So there are some tools that you can use, and, and I recommend that you come outside the CRM tool. I want you to put the same information, notes and personal data, in the dealership CRM, but I'm talking one-to-one -to, -one to salespeople at this point and recommending that they create spreadsheets. Maybe they use their own personal CRM tool, and I'll demonstrate one we use at our company here in just a moment, and create a contact database with Google personal contacts and so on and so forth so that they can keep up with their customers and the information that they deem really significant for better relationships. So the tool that we use in our, in our company is, is one that's really dirt cheap. Uh, it's called Nimble.com, and you can go to Nimble.com and, and download it. It's a, got an iPhone app and everything or an Android app. And this is my daily dashboard. When I log in, it tells me today's top contacts, engagement opportunities from social media, things I'm supposed to do today. But more importantly, it helps me identify, is this an important contact? And if I say yes, then it will ask me when should I follow up with them, and I can put weekly, monthly, quarterly, or, or annually, and then it just shows back up in my my uh, dashboard each day, and it tells me that I've got somebody important to keep up with. I can put pictures in there so I know who I'm talking to, and if you look at the notes that I've made, I've got a good understanding. Additionally, it also shows me their social networks, and if they're on uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, I can follow them on those. So it really spoon feeds me so that I can get a richer, deeper contact level with these customers. Additionally, it, it reminds me, you know, I've got, in this case, 87 people that I've deemed that I really want to stay in touch with. It then pops up, and, and you'll see the star to see that I've favorited them. And it's got a, a clock that identifies that you know they're on the schedule, and I'm going to get a notification to keep up with them again and again and again. So it works out really well. The nice thing of it is it's inexpensive. I think it's 15 bucks a month for a personal account. So uh, there is no cost barrier to keep anyone from doing this. And you can do it on a spreadsheet. You can do this on in binders, whatever you'd want to do. This just is a, a simple tool that we use in our company to keep up with people. And there's rarely a day that goes by to where somebody doesn't say, wow, how did you remember that? I'm thinking, God, thank goodness I've got this tool because otherwise I wouldn't have remembered it. And it makes a huge difference. So starting with like your customers, things that I'm looking for is, is just kind of identifying the database. So how many customers do I have in my personal database? And I'm not worried about the dealership because the dealership's going to be fine on their own. I'm worried about how many you've got in your personal database because if I were buying your business as a salesperson, that's the asset I would want. I would want to know how many customers do you have that I can buy from you that I can communicate with. And you know what what number of customers are possible to have in it in twelve months. So I want to project forward. And then what is my reasonable ongoing contact schedule? Should I contact them daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, biannually? And what are some messages that I can say to them, like wish them a happy birthday, talk about the holidays. Maybe they bought a vehicle, so I've got a vehicle anniversary I want to congratulate them for. So for each of the circles in my larger circle of influence, I want to do the same exercise for each circle. What's nice is, by the time you go through this activity, you're going to have hundreds if not thousands of people that you'll be able to message on a regular basis. And the key is keeping it fresh with your messaging and making it relevant to what the customer is interested in. So how do we put these ideas into action? And I think the key is, is to select the right size of actions on a daily basis for you. So, you know, Creating your own daily business growth plan is essential. So I'll just start high. For those of you who have great ambition, you can start with a daily 50. And a work outline would go something like this. I want to send 20 emails. 
I want to make 12 phone calls, 10 social contacts, and I'll explain that here in just a moment, five handwritten notes, and three text messages. Each and every day when I come to work, I'm not doing it because my boss told me to do it. I'm not doing it because it showed up as a task in my CRM. In fact, that's one of the curses that we've got is we've become very lethargic and we just depend on the CRM to tell us what we're supposed to do. I don't mind that, but I want to make sure that I know what my desire is on a daily basis. And additionally, we've got to think of what our message ideas are for the week. So I get with my management. And if you're a manager on the phone, this should be centrally communicated and your team should know what you want them to communicate to their prospects, their friends, their neighbors, and, and anyone else they're considering as part of their circle of influence. So what are specials? What are the events? Is there anything uh, on, a, on a finance basis, any kind of rebates, anything that's interesting that needs to be out there? Are we doing a, um, a uh, owner's event? Are we going to teach them how to change their own oil? What, what's going on in, in all the departments in the dealership? And additionally, are there any notable updates from the manufacturer? Do we have a new model coming out? Is there anything that would be worthy for us to keep out there in front of our prospects and, and anyone who might be considering that? And something that a lot of people overlook is what are the community events that you might want to mention because uh, there's the summer art fairs, there's county fairs, there's all kinds of things going on and when we can build on giving them information beyond just selling them a car, people open up your communications and they want to engage with you because it's not all selling all the time. So, you know, the old standard ABC always be closing. I would like to amend that to be always be communicating and it doesn't always have to be closing if we're always communicating and it's valuable to the customer and they like you, the chances of your success being great are, are through the roof. And then do the math. Lay it out. You know, Think of who are the 20 to 25 people that I want to send emails to. Who are the people that I'm going to communicate with? And keep good records and make sure that you've got a real science to what you're doing, your phone log your social communication actions, what's the platform I'm going to use, what's the message I'm going to use. Make sure we log all this stuff so that we've got the science to go along with the art of the messaging. Handwritten notes, a lot of people overlook those, but I don't know about you all. When I receive a handwritten note, and I had my 55th birthday on the 20th of this month, <laughs> and I've gotten to this point to where, Ileana, nobody sends me any handwritten notes except for my dad. <laughs> and uh, I covered the fact I don't even get a note from Southwest or Delta Airlines anymore. I might get an email or I might get a text, but nobody nobody puts that. But when I get that handwritten note, I hold it up to my heart because I love the feeling of the warmth where somebody really went to the trouble to write something personal to me. It makes a huge difference. Oh, I totally and agree. Course, <laughs> texting works too, and it's a really personal way to do that. And we'll get into some examples as we dig deeper in. So how do we make this personal and how do we make it matter? Well, I think we've got to always have something to talk about. And there really is always something to talk about. So I think you know this, Ileana, I'm in a dealership today and I was just in a meeting with the managers and I asked them, how many days a year is it the very best day to buy a car? And they all agreed, every single day. And when we communicate to a customer that today is the best day, your trade will never be worth more, our prices will never you know, be better, you know, inventory is the best it's ever been, there's always some sort of a spin we can put on it to make that customer really feel like today is the right day. And I promise you there is. So there's things we can talk about, inventory updates, incentives, Concept vehicles, I used to send this to my customers when they were interested in the, the new pickup truck or the new sports car. I would send them future uh, vehicle pictures, and they loved that. It David, did I lose you? David. Uh-oh. Hold on, audience. Let me see if I can locate him. 
And while we're locating, oh no, I don't know. He's still here. David, if you're there, uh-oh. Let's see if we can reach him by text. So, David? Yes. Hi, you completely cut out for the last minute. I did. You did. Well, we lost you. We had no audio with you. Well, hopefully we didn't miss too much. <laughs> Isn't it Do you ironic? think you could go back and go over the last couple things you said? <laughs> yeah, so ironically it must have cut out when I said there's always something to talk about. <laughs> so the interesting thing and the point I want to make here is there really are 365 best days to buy a vehicle. And sometimes we've got to have some sort of a stimulant on a daily basis to get this across to our team. So I remember when I was selling cars, uh, it was really important, and we do this with our training, tell them about the new inventory, tell them about incentives. Um, one of the things that, that worked really well for me is when I would um, clip out pictures of future or concept vehicles and I would send them to my customers. We can do that so easily now, and it's a really kind, non salesy way to just show connection with the customer. Additionally, community events, uh, if we win an award, uh, you know, the, the better known ones are birthdays, vehicle anniversaries, and things of that nature. But there's always something that we can say to the customer. And if anybody ever needs an idea, just send me an email, and I'll be glad to help them out. Still working okay? We're doing okay. <laughs> Excellent. All right. So how do we take this? thought process and, and we make it real. So we've got to think in terms of, okay, on a daily basis, if I'm going to send 20 to 25 emails, what can I say? Well, I want to make sure you understand a lot of people like to hit send on 500 emails or hit send on 1,000 emails. I personally have learned that the fewer emails you send, but the more personalized emails you send, the better off your results are going to be. So whether it's a prospect, whether it's a customer, I like to work in batches of 20 to 25. That allows me to maybe send a template type email that then I can study the response rate and make adjustments to get that point across to the customer. So an example here is we love your car. And I always like this one, would you be interested in seeing what your model would be worth? I can even provide a free car wash at your time, uh, for your time. So bring them in, make it easier, just let them know that you know that's something that would be of interest, and, and just keep it light. A lot of people will engage with something this simple. When it comes to voicemail, and people don't realize how important this is to do personalized content. And we, we see this a lot, Eliana, is we'll see or we'll listen, I guess I should say that better, we'll hear a voicemail that sounds just like the one that was left the day before and the month before and the year before from a dealership. And people don't respond to that. And if you're wondering why people aren't responding to your voicemails, maybe we're saying the same wrong thing over and over and over. What we've learned is just like with small batch emails, we like small batch voicemails that are really personal for the customer. So an example, Paula, we just traded for a year making model. It's kind of unique that I think would be worth a conversation when you have time. Great one to send to a loyal customer, someone that you looked up in the database and you know what they're interested in. Wonderful voicemail that you know, they may or may not call you back on, but the more personalized it is, the better off it will be. And then, of course, to be effective at social media, we have to grow our network on a daily basis, and, and we love social selling. So the first thing we recommend everyone do is, as they look at their social network accounts, do your count. How many people are you friends with? And one of the things that we've learned is, Follow your customers on all of their social accounts, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, Google+, whatever. And I would follow both their business account and their personal account. And that's what we do. And what's cool about it is once we're in their network, we can engage with them. And when I talk about social engagement, all I'm talking about are these little stimulants that are when we favorite a tweet or we get a retweet. 
and Eliana, you and I both love tweeting. <laughs> Doesn't it just tickle you to death when someone retweets or quotes your tweet or favorites your tweet? Oh, Don't you yeah. just love that? And we're hoping that's going to happen today a lot. And uh, <laughs> I know, I know that when we have Kevin from Wilder on the phone, we're in a position to where he's going to tweet almost everything, and uh, and it makes a huge difference and it makes us all feel good. Your customers are looking at their Twitter account. And when you favor or you retweet something that they posted, they hear you, they see you, and you're not trying to sell them a car. It's just a gentle nudge to let them know that you still matter and you're paying attention to what's important to them. Now, expanding beyond that, and I love Twitter. It's a great way to keep up with people. My very favorite would be uh, LinkedIn. And LinkedIn affords me the opportunity to learn a lot about the customer. I can get a lot of details. I can see what they put in there in their description. I can see what their work history has been. It just helps me connect at a more rich level and it's easy. I can invite them all and LinkedIn does all the work for me. So really, really simple process to start building your network. So once we've got that network built, how do we keep up with them? Well, LinkedIn has made it so simple for us. And on a daily basis, what I like to do is I go to LinkedIn, and LinkedIn will serve up things like this. And it will say, does this person have these skills or expertise? Well, if I know I'm going to endorse them, and here's what's cool is LinkedIn is sometime during the day going to send them an email that says, David Kane endorsed you for retail, automobile, vehicles, team building, SEM. And that really makes them feel great that I was thinking about them. And it's uncanny how many emails I get back that says, thank you for that. Well, in our business, it's pretty commonplace. But for individuals who buy cars, when they see their salesperson endorsing them, it really makes a big difference. And we can like their posts if they are so inclined to do that. It's a great way to build on your business clients. And then, of course, once you learn a good strategy, repeat it. And this works on Facebook. It works on Instagram. It works on Google+. It works on YouTube. Just keep this going on a daily basis. It will make a huge difference. And, and learn that social selling is about connecting and personalized communications. And social selling is all about personalized content. Uh, the dealership I'm with today is Beachmont Toyota. They've got a gentleman in this lower left-hand corner here called, um, or he goes by the handle of Save with Dave. And Dave, <laughs> every delivery, he has the customer and him hold up a happy new car delivery day or happy new car day. And he loves it. The customers love it. They engage with him. And it turns out really, really nice. My brother Patrick, he's in the middle picture there. I was able to get him to take a picture at his desk and put it on Facebook. It was unbelievable. Just a picture of him sitting at his desk. Within 24 hours, he had 11 comments. He had a ton of different likes. Customers loved that. 31 people did this, and he was thinking, oh, my God, I never would have dreamed just a silly picture of me sitting at my desk would cause that kind of engagement. Additionally, Trent Nichols, this young man in, in Tucson, Arizona, whenever he sells a vehicle, he asks the customer to take a picture or he'll take a picture for him and they'll help him post it on their Facebook account. It's great to post it on your account, but it's even better when they post it on their account. And it works out really, really well to help with your engagement. People will then ask their friends, who did you buy that car from? And it just builds on that circle of influence and the social engagement part. Now, texting, a lot of people are, are depending real heavily on this. So what we've learned is texting can be personal when we make it that way. And one of my very favorites, and I think I've shown it uh, to different audiences of yours, Liliana, is this one text that I got from a young man that I was considering buying a car from. Just took a picture of the car, sent it to me, and said, she's been asking about you all day. <laughs> what I want to do is give the customer pause to think about me 
and to think about considering me when they want to buy a car. That's all engagement is all about is that pause that they'll take. They might not respond to you, but you are building great top of mind awareness and it works really, really well. Postcards, I mentioned it earlier, they're the greatest secret in the industry that nobody uses. And we've walked away from them in favor of ease and convenience. Well, we can make them personal. We can take photos. We can print them out. All we have to do is go to the Staples or Office Depot and buy the cards. We can do very, very explicit communications to them, write a nice personal note, drop it in the mail. It does build relationships deeper and richer than you can ever imagine. So please keep that in mind. and Don't discount postal mail. It really still works. And if you still need ideas, <clears throat> try the holiday follow-up plan. It's worked really, really well for me over the years. I still use it in my business today, and it allows me to communicate and have a reason to communicate and not be in the pushing for a sell type opportunity every day. So keep that in mind. It's important for them to hear from you on a regular basis. And if you're having trouble with the messaging, this is a good old standard bearer that I'd encourage all of y'all to incorporate in your own follow-up plan. So a lot of people say, well, what am I going to send? What are my resources? Well, I've got a page here, and this will be good for them to utilize after the broadcast. I'd encourage them to download it. But Twitter, follow your brand, follow your customers. LinkedIn, same thing, follow your brand. On Facebook, same thing. YouTube, subscribe to your brand videos. Same thing with Instagram and Google+. The brand nearly daily is putting something out there that then you can retweet, you can send in an email, you can send as a link in a text so that you can engage with customer. And it makes a huge difference when you give them something that's new or interesting to kind of grasp onto. Just really builds on that deeper, richer relationship. And when we talk about social ideas, just some things to have out there uh, put. This is just a resource for later that they can act on. And um, I'll have that available for them. I want to talk just a bit about <coughs> offline and online communities and, and really focus more on offline. And, and a lot of people don't get involved in their local communities anymore because we work so long. And I've learned this from dealerships is those dealerships that allow their team members to join JCs or Kiwanis or the Lions Club, which is what I was a member of for years, it allows them to get off campus, go out into the community, and be involved and to give back. And when they're wearing the shirt from the dealership and they're building that brand for themselves, it makes a huge difference. I was a member of the Kentucky Thoroughbred Farm Managers Club. As a result of that engagement, and being on the golf tournament committee, I was the number one salesperson for uh, thoroughbred horse farms in central Kentucky, and it made a huge difference because they knew me as a person before they knew me as a salesperson. It just made it way easier to help them. So whether we're doing it in the online communities or offline communities, we need to get engaged with these, these social uh, opportunities. So how do we make it work for ourselves? Well, we got to do a daily social hour. And I would encourage dealerships to set this up in the dealership. So we can't just expect that the team is going to do it on their own. We've got to create the environment to do it. So at our family's dealership, we just implemented this. From 9.30 to 10.30 each morning, we have a daily social hour. And it's supervised by a manager. And it makes a huge difference because the manager is out there with the messaging, ensuring that everybody is going through their daily work plan. And they're, they're helping them with what needs to be said. And by making it just part of the daily routine, it's becoming a habit. And we're already starting to see big lifts in overall engagement because we're building those circles of influence. So building a strong circle of influence truly is your key to success. And, and I do have a poll question, and it, it kind of covers what we were just talking about, Eliana. And if you could throw that out for them, I'd love to hear their answer to this. 
Absolutely. All right, audience. It's your only poll question of the day, so why not get involved? We want to know, do you currently have a daily social hour at your dealership? Please select one of the following answers. Yes, and it's working great for us. Yes, we could use some guidance on how to make it even more effective. Not yet, but you know what? We're thinking about it. No, management would never go for that. Or yes, but it's at a local bar and it's after work hours. I don't know if that's the kind of social hour we were talking about, but we still want to know your answer. Do you currently have a daily social hour at your dealership? Once we get a majority of those, those votes in, we're going to close the poll and share the results. And I hope you've been getting your questions in for David Kane. We're going to be getting to the Q&A session in just a moment, so you don't want to miss that. And we have that great prize to give away, too. But first, let's get to this poll question. Social hour at your dealership? Yeah, it's working great for us. Yes, but we could make it more effective. We need help on that. Not yet, but we're thinking about it. No management would never go for that. Or yes, but it's at a local bar and it's after work hours. David, if you're ready for the results from our poll question, I'll close it and share the results. That would be great. All right, here we go, audience. Okay, no one, no one said that they have a social hour at their dealership and it's working great for them. Just letting you know that, wow. David. But 5% five yeah. per, of today's audience said they do have a social hour, but they admit they could use some guidance on how to make it more effective. So right there, David, I just want you to know, only 5% of my very savvy very forward-thinking audience actually has a social hour at their dealership. Wow. Okay. Well, lots of opportunity there, isn't there? There is. Now, the majority, 63%, said not yet, but that's something we would definitely try. We're thinking about it. 21% said management would never go for that. And the remaining 11% admit their idea of social hour is at a local bar after work hours, preferably with some tequila. So, David. <laughs> that was smaller than I thought, the 11%. That's good. 11% <laughs> right. was smaller than you thought. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't we do this? I mean, I think that's really good that just on the heels of what we've talked about, that they're thinking about doing one on their own. So what I'd ask them to do is to outline their circles of influence on an individual basis. Grow the membership in each of the circles and then leverage the tools available in the market whether you're using spreadsheets, your own CRM or something outside like what we do. And then of course conduct your own daily social hour and connect with your customers. It will make a big difference with you going down the line. So I'll turn it back over to you, Ileana. I'm exhausted. If you're as tired of hearing me talk as I am of oh, talking, stop. I think it's a good time to answer some questions. <laughs> I could listen to that Southern drawl all week long. Are you kidding me, David? <laughs> but thank you so much. Yes, wonderful presentation. We actually have a number of questions to hand out to you, which we are going to get to in just a minute. Audience, if you haven't gotten your question yet in for David, well, now would be a great time. We actually have to close this webinar a little bit early. As David said, he is at a dealership. So we're going to be closing up this webinar at exactly 1 o'clock. So get your questions in. Let's see how many we can get through. Also, well, it's that time. If you missed it at the beginning of the webinar, I announced that our good friends at Kane Automotive, they're giving away an awesome prize today on the webinar. One of you lucky webinar attendees is going to win a seat. For you and a guest at Kane Automotive's 11th Annual Automotive Digital Success Workshop. It's November 10th through the 12th in Lexington, Kentucky. Dealeron is, in fact, a sponsor, and our Director of Search and Social, Greg Gifford, is also going to be a keynote presenter. This is an amazing educational opportunity. It always is. He has wowed audiences for a decade now, so he's continuing the awesomeness. And this November, this prize is valued at eight. Hundred dollars, but I got to tell you, the knowledge and education that you receive in those two and a half, three days, priceless. Tremendous prize for you and your dealership. You're going to want this one, so all you have to do, get ready, saddle up to your keyboard, answer a simple question about the presentation that you just saw, be the first one, 
and you're going to be our winner. You're going to be walking away with this cool prize today. Good luck, everyone. Of course, vendors, as you can tell, this prize really isn't for you, so please sit this one out. Of course, we appreciate you, but this prize is intended for dealership personnel only. Here we go. Good luck, everyone. Here's the question. David Kane has spent the last hour or so discussing all the different kinds of circles of influence that you should be utilizing. We want you to name four of the eight circles of influence. Good luck. And you know, this is the time I wish I had some like Jeopardy music, thinking music. I got no music for you, but hopefully you guys will come up with something. Oh, we already have a few people who wrote in. Let's see if anyone got four. Who's my first one? Hmm, 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 hmm. Oh, our very first person who wrote in is a winner, Nick Domino. You are today's winner. Congratulations, Nick Domino. Woo-woo. All right. What I need from you, Nick, I need everything. I need you to send me all your information, but right now, what I really need, yeah, happy face. Uh, what I really need is to know what dealership you're from so I can give you a proper congratulations. Nick, you and a friend are going to go to... Uh, uh, you're going to get two tickets to Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, I'm sorry, to the educational experience of a lifetime, I should say. It's going to be in Lexington, Kentucky. So hopefully you can find your way to Lexington, Kentucky, November 10th, 11th, and 12th. You and a friend are going to sit through some amazing educational workshops, courtesy of our friends at Kane Automotive. All right, Nick Domino is from Beach Automotive in Myrtle Beach. Congratulations, mm -hmm. Nick. Nick has been one of our most loyal uh, attendees to the event, and uh, he can vouch for the fact that it's a good deal. And now he's just made it a much better deal for this November. <laughs> Nick, I hope you were planning on coming. You just got yourself a free ticket, my friend. Congratulations. Um, David, do you need any other information from him that I don't already have? Do you need like a mailing nope. address or something? Nope. All we're, right. We're all good. Nick has already been tweeting about us today, so we're in good shape. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Congratulations, Nick. And of course, audience, thank you so much for playing along. We appreciate all of you, and don't worry. You know what? We give away really cool prizes every week. Maybe today wasn't your day, but you know what? Next week might be. So please come on back to another Dealer On webinar. We'll see if we can't get you one of these cool prizes, all right? And, of course, thank you again to our friends at Kane Automotive for their incredible generosity. All right, everyone, let's get to your questions. We don't have a lot of time, so let's get started. Um, okay, I'm scrolling up. And we have a lot of comments from Michael, who says, David Kane and I, elected from California, were of the few associates that launched Ford Direct back in the early 2000s. But he is a great follower of yours, Michael, and um, he had a lot of great questions for you. So, for instance, this one question, how are you able to measure or assess the fruition of your training in stores that succeed in organic data-based production. Hmm. David? Uh, yeah, definitely Michael Baker. I <laughs> know him well. <clears throat> He's wonderful. He's a dealer's kid as well and uh, has a nice business going, so we want to give him kudos. But um, the assessment's really simple, and it's the growth of the database and the daily engagement that occurs back to the dealership personnel. And what we're finding on a, on a regular basis, Michael, is when we keep good records and we utilize the proper CRM, it's easy to measure that engagement. That's why I love the CRM that we use is uh, because it shows that track record and then we're able to convert that over into just like we would with leads, we end up getting appointments and then we bring them in for sales. But that's not the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal with this is to expand the growth of the circles so that on a daily basis we never know when someone's going to come into the dealership or back into communications with us by social or by phone call or by email. We're just looking to cover all the bases and, and get in their line of sight on a regular basis and it does work and we've got the uh, immediate statistics to prove the value of the effort. I love it. Okay, Michael, thank you so much. I think we have uh, a few more comments coming up from him in a little bit. Your next question, David, comes from Will 
David, <laughs> he says, just to be clear, David Kane is not saying that the salespeople should use their own CRM instead of the dealership CRM, is he? Actually, I am, and I'm encouraging them really? to do it in concert with the dealership CRM. So this will be a controversial position, but the fact of the matter is a lot of dealerships are really frustrated with their, their growth of their salespeople, and they get really angry with the fact that, oh, my God, those are my customers, and, and I, I am really frustrated when salespeople try to grow their own database. Well, I'm, I'm of the other side of the coin, which basically says the more successful we can make salespeople, the more attractive they are to our dealership. And what we're finding is hyper-successful salespeople stay. Salespeople who don't have good root systems that allow them to really grow and perpetuate within a dealership tend to fly off at a whim. And what we're finding is those that we allow to build really good, strong databases, and particularly if the dealership endorses their own uh, growth CRM, uh, what we're looking for is the CRM in the dealership to be utilized, but it also doesn't provide all the variables that we're looking for to expand the communications links. So uh, I, I hope, and the nice thing of it is a lot of these CRM add-ons like uh, that we're talking about today can be leveraged into the same dealership CRM. So Nimble, for example, uh, is utilized each and every day in Salesforce. And we've approached several CRM companies in the, in the automotive industry and encouraged them to leverage this tool into their own CRM. So put the pressure on your CRM provider to bring this kind of information in. And then I'm all for keeping it within the dealership CRM. But, it, but at this point, I would say if you're wanting your individual to really grow their own database, they probably need to duplicate the activity outside in their own either spreadsheet or their own CRM. So duplication, I want them to keep all the information in the same dealership CRM so it's a redundant activity, but I want them to make sure that I feel comfortable with them going outside. Gotcha, gotcha. Great question, David. Thank you so much. Your next question, David, comes to you from Kim. She says, what social media platforms do you like best? <laughs> Don't tell me all of them, David. <laughs> uh, so, so really the one that I like the best is uh, LinkedIn. And the reason yeah. why I like LinkedIn is it's one of those tools that uh, reminds me to communicate on a daily basis. And it gives me real good business data for myself. And I think a lot of times we fail to realize that that's a good opportunity for a lot of people to, to utilize. So still love Facebook, still love Twitter, but, but my favorite for business communications and building circles of influence is LinkedIn. David, are you friends with me on LinkedIn? If not, we should we should check in on that and, and no, correct that. Sure. <laughs> okay, your next question, David, comes from Tamara. Hey, Tamara, how you doing? She says, can you please tell us more about a daily social hour? So that's a great question, Tamara. David, if, if if Tamara or people like Tamara wanted to host a daily social hour at their dealership, start doing that. How yeah, would you so run a daily social hour? How do you get people involved in this? I think it starts at the top, and the dealership needs to come up with the messaging that they want to cascade through the team through each day. So uh, we talk to ad agencies. We put updates on our website, there's always a message that's a leading message for the week. And I think the dealership needs to provide that each and every day to the sales team. And then they, they can do it at their own desk. They can go into a BDC type center, wherever it is that they need to communicate. And what we've seen work really well is just set up a time each day to where a manager oversees the activities and every one of their employees is in the CRM and they're sending emails. They're sending text messages via the legal format. They're writing handwritten notes. And all of this is driven by the manager that's going around for one hour, once a day. And whether they're starting with five activities, 10 activities, 20 or 30, they're in a position where it makes a huge difference with that management oversight. So we've got to build the habit. And then once we see the system and the team starts to see the fruits of their labor, 
they'll take it over from there. But one hour once a day, management spending the time to do it with no distractions, it works phenomenal. Great. Okay, let's get to a couple of really quick questions, and then we're going to close out the show. Michael wrote back in, what would be your best hour for a daily social hour? Is there a best hour? Is it like a lunch? Well, my personal experience is we're starting to see mid-morning as a good time before we get into the afternoon rush or the, the lunch hours for the breaks and stuff. So I would say somewhere between that 9 and 11 a.m. timeline in your oh. local market makes a big difference. Okay, that sounds great. Okay, and then your last question comes from Todd. He's got a great question. He wants to know, so how long does this take to work? You were just talking about the fruits of their labor. How long to, to, does it take to see some results from all of this? Uh, literally, it can happen on the first day. What? What, what we see is when you engage with your customer and they, they engage back to you, you have results right away. Now, is it sales results? Maybe, maybe not. But the fact of the matter is you hone your messaging, people engage, and you build on your network right away. And it does work. I love it. All right, audience, you heard the man. No reason in the world not to build a stronger circle of influence. David Kane, as always, you are brilliant and eloquent, and I... <laughs> Uh, how long do I have to wait before I get you back on my show? <laughs> Look at me putting you on the spot right here. I'll tell you what, I'm going to email you about this. David, thank you so much for being here today. You are wonderful, wonderful. I love webinaring with you. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. And good luck at the Kane Automotive Conference. I know as, as in the past, it is going to be spectacular. So thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. <laughs> I want to remind the audience that I'm going to send you a link so that you can download a copy of this webinar recording. It's going to be sent out to you later this evening. You can also find that same webinar recording at dealeron.com slash webinar. And from there, you can view our upcoming webinar set schedule or access any of our past webinars. Also, at the conclusion of this webinar, you're going to receive a short survey. We want to know what you thought of today's presentation. Let us know. Fill it out. We're always looking for great feedback from our audience. Today we're going to randomly select a couple of people from all the completed surveys to also win some Google Prizes. And you heard me talk about it before. Dealeron is going to be attending the must-see event, Kane Automotive's 11th Annual Automotive Digital Success Workshop, November 10th through the 12th in Lexington, Kentucky, your passport to digital success. You'll be able to build a plan that perfectly aligns with your goals, and it'll carry you through into the new year. What could be better than that? Oh, that's right. Dealer on Zone Director of Search and Social. Greg Gifford, he's going to be a keynote speaker. You're not going to want to miss that. So for tickets or more information, check out KaneAutomotive.com. We hope to see you there. And invitations will be going out tomorrow for our next webinar, How to Leverage Yelp to Drive Sales and Service. That's right. Yelp is a publicly traded company that owns the most powerful social networking website, Yelp.com, which publishes publishes unsolicited crowdsourced reviews about local businesses. With 135 million monthly visitors and 71 million reviews, there's no denying Yelp is a major player in the online review space. So why are there so many dealerships that have yet to take advantage of Yelp to improve their traffic, customer loyalty, branding, sales, or service? Is your dealership currently using Yelp? If not, then you're missing an enormous opportunity. If your dealership has been holding off from fully utilizing Yelp, then wait no longer. The expert is here, and he's ready to help. In this eye-opening one-hour webinar, dealership marketing and communications expert Jeff Kreider will lead you through the mysteries of Yelp, debunking long-held myths and uncovering little-known information on how it works. Moreover, he'll also discuss how you can leverage Yelp to successfully drive more traffic to your showroom service drive and parts counters. So if you're ready to learn how to leverage Yelp to drive sales and service, then don't miss this webinar. And don't forget Dealeron's weekly webinars are held Thursdays, 12 noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, and 9 a.m. Pacific. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions regarding these webinars and our topics, feel free to contact me directly. Again, I'm Eliana Raggio. I'd love to hear from you. Track me down online. I'm everywhere. I'm on all the automotive social networks. I'm on every social network. Email me directly at eliana at dealeron.com. Thank you all so very much for spending this time with us today, and I hope to see you all on another webinar in Dealeron's continuing education series. Take care. <laughs>